Good morning. Good morning. It's happy Saturday. <gasps> happy Saturday. Connor? Connor wants to play. Hi, buddy. <laughs> Go away. Go. Go get your... Shh. Oh, so this is how it's going to be today. I got sassy boy on my hands. <sighs> Tell you what, if you want your dog to feel good and act like a puppy, give him CBD oil. Oh my gosh. This guy has changed so much in the last couple of months since he's been on CBDs. And it takes very little each day. He takes, you know, he gets like a fourth of a dropper in the morning and a fourth in the evening. And um, he's feeling really, really good. And he's playful. He's um, alert. He still sleeps all afternoon, but he's awake all morning and he's awake all evening. So it's pretty good. <laughs> but, you know, he's only like two and a half almost three years old, I think. And um, he's, uh, you know, he should be healthy and playing and having fun. So anyway, I hope you're doing well this morning. And um, my topic today, other than our reading from the Book of Awakening, is called Christianity is a Verb. How does that make you feel when you hear that? Um, here's how that came about for me. I, um, okay, so I have somebody in my life, a friend, who's been in my life for a long time. And another friend who has been in my life for a long time said something to me about how this friend A had said some really, really shitty things about me behind my back. And, you know, honestly, I'm not surprised at all by that because I've heard this person say shitty things about a lot of people that she said to me. And I just don't buy into it. I just, you know, let it go. I make no comment. I am Switzerland, okay? I'm Switzerland. I'm that neutral person there. So, um, so it didn't surprise me. But I was thinking about it last night and this morning, and you know, it kind of, kind of pissed me off a little bit. And then I started feeling kind of hurt by it, because this person is always telling me and everyone else what a great Christian they are. Um, that made me start thinking about that. Jesus, to me, is probably the greatest teacher we have ever seen. Um, and there have been many great master teachers. I'm not dismissing any of them or lessening any of them. They're all wonderful. I love the teachings of Jesus, though, and I love how he taught. Because he taught from a place of, um, of teaching us how we can have what he has and that um, this is all open to us so it was for him it was not about power it was he was teaching us he was teaching us so we can take those lessons or we don't have to you know um, I don't think that in my opinion I don't think that Christ ever intended for his teachings to become a religion, an organized religion. That's just my feeling, so. Um, I truly believe he was here just to show us by example what is possible and what we can do, what we can have, um, the gifts that we are born with. Um, what we choose to do with them is up to us, right? And so I started thinking about Christianity and where it is today, especially in, in relation to how I believe it was originally intended. Um, and, you know, telling somebody that you're a Christian, that's all good and fine. But I believe it's in the action, not the words. Christianity to me is a verb. 
It's an action. It's how you treat others. It's um, how you show up in the world. Are you, do you think that Jesus like talked behind other people's backs? Do you think he criticized people? Do you think that he shunned people from his life? Because whatever, his own personal feelings, um, his own personal judgments. If that's who you think Jesus is and what it means to be a Christian, um, I beg to, fit, to differ with that. I, I have a different opinion. And, you know, it's okay if that's your opinion. I have no attachment to your opinion. I'm just saying for me, and this is all just me and my feelings, um, I believe it's more about your actions. I believe it's more about who you are, how you treat others, and how you show up in the world, as I said. Connor, really, it's not anything to cry about. You're okay. Take your dragon and go play. I'll be there shortly. <laughs> so anyway, just food for thought. I remember when I was a teenager and, and um, you know, I, I always would hear things like, well, the Bible says this, the Bible says that, the Bible says this, the Bible says that. And, you know, I kind of came to the conclusion that the Bible can really be summed up in three words, in my opinion. Those three words are love one another. If we all just loved one another, would we not be living in the Bible's um, the Bible's teachings on what we should and shouldn't do? It seems easy to me, you know. Just be love. There, it's in two words. It get even simpler. And you know what? I find the same precepts I've studied. Um, I've studied uh, uh, Judaism some. Uh, I've studied some Buddhism, even though Buddhism is not a religion, it's a way of life. A lot of people think it's a religion. Um, I have not studied Islam. I'd like to someday. But I think that the same message is true for all these different teachings. They're love one another. How simple is that? Why do we make things so difficult? You know, if we love ourselves first, we can love one another. And in doing that, aren't we living what Christ taught? Aren't we living what the Buddha taught? Aren't we living what Allah taught? Just saying. My opinion. Okay, there. I've had my soapbox moment. Ready to get on with my day. <laughs> I'd love to hear your thoughts, though. So please don't hesitate to make comments. And, you know, if you disagree, that's, like I say, I have no attachment to that. I'm fine with that. This is a discussion. It's not me just telling. You know, I'm just expressing my opinion and my belief. That's just who I are. Okay, so today's the lesson, which is a blessing and a lesson all in one, is from the Book of Awakening by Mark Nepo. And it's called, Love is in the Being. Wow, I wonder if this will go with my little rant this morning. The center I once glimpsed is all around me, a landscape I now live in, and I will not pretend anymore. If those I love can't recognize me with my soul out in the open, I will no longer retreat and show what is familiar. Wow, the little opening intro here is pretty powerful, right? I'm gonna be authentic. That's who I strive to be every day. And like it or love it, hate it, despise it. It's about you, not me. <laughs> Sassy bitch today, aren't I? So anyway, um, okay, here we go. You do not have to do anything to be loved. You do not have to perform or achieve or earn a merit badge or be witnessed doing good. It has taken me almost half a century to learn and believe this. It is my work to this day for our messages 
to the contrary, are deep. Growing up, I heard my father say a thousand times, don't tell me how hard you try, just show me what you accomplished. But my life has shown me that the opposite is true. In my heart, where the spirit of the world really comes alive, it doesn't matter what I accomplish. The only thing that matters is how deeply I try. For out of this trying comes sincerity and love. This has led me to another realization of heart. Being who we are does not let others down. Mm. For much of my adult life, I've heard this message. You must consider others. Offered as a caution against following your heart because it might upset others. Certainly, true compassion begins with the consideration of others. But the displeasure of others is no reason to muffle your love. You do not have to do anything to be loved. And being who you are does not let others down. That's important. Who you are does not let others down. This needs to be repeated. And often, I just did that. Who you are, <laughs> being who you are does not let others down. I'll repeat it again. Uh -huh. Simply be who you are and love what is before you. All right. You want to try the exercise with me? Just center yourself. Take a deep breath. <clears throat> Whether you're sitting or you're lying down, if you're not driving, I would invite you to close your eyes. Take a deep breath in. And release it slowly. With each deep breath you take, just feel yourself becoming more grounded, more planted and rooted where you are right now. Letting go of all outside noises. And just let your body relax. Focus your breath on that inside spot. That spot inside of your body where you connect. Maybe it's in your heart. Maybe it's in your gut. Maybe you feel it in the top of your head. Wherever that is, just place your breath there and be still. Breathing in love. And breathing out anything that does not serve you, that is not authentic. As you center yourself and with each breath, Put aside your accomplishments. Breathe deeply and with each breath. Put aside the things you have not accomplished. Sit in the center of your being without these uniforms of goodness and know that you are beautiful as a mountain or a river. Just the way you are. And I would add to this that you can always invite in that Christ consciousness. And I would ask 
that my actions always reflect my beliefs. Letting go of my judgments, letting go of my fear, letting go of the false me that no longer serves me, that no longer serves humanity. Just being in my center and loving myself so that I may love others and resting quietly, peacefully, and deeply in that Christ center within me. And taking a nice deep breath in. Allow your eyes to float open. Taking a soft gaze. Go out and have a blessed day. Be kind to yourself, be kind to others. Be a Christian. If that's how you identify. Don't tell me you're a good Christian. Show me, okay? That's all I'm saying. Have a great day. Happy Saturday. Enjoy your weekend. I will see you tomorrow morning on Sunday. And our topic tomorrow is the rabbit in the garden. Wow. The real voyage of discovery consists not in seeking new landscapes, but in having new eyes by Marcel Proust. Okay. Blessings. Have a happy Saturday. Have fun today. And uh, enjoy. Spend some me time. And be good to each other. I love you. Bye.